Right, I've got to make this gate. This top rail is made of two 250 mil boards. I can't get exactly 250 mil, so they'll finish about 240. I'll join them with a loose tenon. And on the sides here, I'm going to put proper mortise and tenons in. These boards are just matchboard, just softwood matchboard. The whole thing was going to be just pine, just softwood. But I couldn't get hold of these boards, two inch thick. So I've gone for tulip on those. These tenons are going to hold these in. I don't know if I'm going to be able to get the domino in there. So they'll probably have to be just normal mortises as well. We'll see. Might have a go at that. But first thing. Oh, there's a bottom rail. That's inch and a half stuff. That's buried on my rack there. I need to dig that out. And then there'll be a, a brace behind. That way I think. That'll be inch and a half stuff as well. The first thing, the posts are already in. The posts are already in, you saw me do that a little while ago. They're undersized. I couldn't get hold of some decent timbers for them. So probably gonna end up putting a there's a there's a wall there. I'm gonna end up putting a metal tie back. Because the skate's gonna be quite heavy. The first thing cut some wood. Cut and plane some wood. It's too wide, couldn't fit through my hole. Just get jigsaw out, cut a bit more out. Gonna extend it one day. No, oh, these are too wide to go with my jointer. Jointer six inch, and these are ten. So, they'll go through the thickness there, but they've got a slight wobble to them. If I put them through the thickness like that, they'll just come out twisted. So I need to try and put one straight edge on, one straight flat edge. Right, I wound the blade, I wound the table down. I want to do this in one pass, so I'm going to take one nice big chunky cut. It's hard to tell, but looking down it, looks quite good. It's the best I can do. You see people putting them on a board and putting wedges underneath. I like that, but that only works if your board that you're putting it on is absolutely flat. And these have only got, you know, five mil twist in them, so. Got a piece of half inch ply. Don't matter that it's bent, the important thing is that it's, it's the same thickness all the way down.
that worked quite well. I know my table's pretty. I know my table's pretty flat. Don't know if you can see. But this one doesn't move at all. That's very flat. I'll do this one the same. Oh, that's the test. Second one's done. There's no movement in that at all. Oh, I need to rip this one down the middle. It is pretty straight. But just to make sure it goes through cleanly, I'm going to put one, one straight edge on this edge. Uh, these two are the same thickness now and those two are the same thickness but I need to make them both the same thickness <laughs> that makes sense so I'll put them through the planer again under the planer again make them the same thickness and I've already got one planed edge on there so I just need to boom boom
Alright, so now they're the same thickness, both edges are cleaned up. I just ran these ones through the, under the planer. You just saw me rip one side, you just saw me plane one edge of that. I ripped them down to the same width, and then just one nice clean pass. You have to watch which way the grain's going. You see, this is running down, so you want the blade cutting like that. If you go against this, it'll just break out. This is nice wood, but it's quite brittle. It'll just spelch out. This is a little bit of grain lifted there. Ah, I cut some of these timbers to length. I cut these ones first. And from there, I can work out what size these are. Right, let me two legs, two styles. I know my need, I know my gate needs to be eleven forty. So I put eleven forty there. I know that to the shoulders of my cross rails, I need nine twenty five. So just write that down. 925. Gonna make me turnings and my mortises Ooh. 80 mil. So that's one, 160 for two. So I know that these cross rails I need to cut now at 1085 okay. square one end first just mark it Then we're just going to come down 50 mil. Set these two timbers on. Make a little pencil mark. Put 
put them back together. So now we've got the width of the top rail but we need to come in so I want my tenons to have shoulders on them then I need to work out what configuration of tenons I'm going to do because it's not going to be one big tenon it's going to be one there one there right, this is the bottom I'm going to come up 100 now don't need to mark that just yet but I know the match board I'm using is 15 mil put a pencil mark there and I've got 34 mil there so that's the size that I'm going to make this bottom rail and the brace so I need to cut and plane that now right, I just cut two pieces this is the same length as those top rails I've got another piece there that I'm going to use as a brace. I had to dig it out of my rack there. Pack pieces up underneath to hold that bar so that I could slide that timber out. Those two pieces came out of a wide board like that. I did the same as I did on the legs. Put one straight edge on, ripped it down the middle, cleaned that edge up again and then planed them until they're square. But that now is well dodgy. Mm. Anyway, back to this. So, I've got my two legs here. Sit that on top of there, that's my 100mm that I marked from the bottom. Sit that on there. Mark that. Let's put a little clamp on those. So, it's been marked as red. Square them over. open grain again here. But match boards going on there and I'm gonna stick a bead on the inside. I'm gonna come in 20mm. I'm gonna come in oh just 10mm I think. I'm gonna mark these but I'm not gonna square them right over. And there's going to be a tenon in there, half lap tenon and mortise. I'm going to come in again, 10 mil. Same again, mark them, but not all the way over. That way I can tell the difference which one's which. There's a hard rub I've had this ages. I'm going to remove that line just because it's confusing. Right, now I need to do some work on the top rail so that I can work out these mortises. I've decided which way around these boards are going to go. That's the top. These boards are going to join here. I'm going to put a groove in these two edges and I'll cut a slip of wood to go in as a loose tongue then I'll glue that together I could put a few dominoes in but they're a bit random and if these boards ever do open up you'll see straight through I think a loose tongue is stronger so 
so I'm going to use a slot cutter. Just put a clamp on just so that I can get this gap right. Just need to cut a piece of wood to go in there. I could have put a tongue on one and a groove in the other, but these boards are only just wide enough for what I need. If I put a tongue on, I'd lose, lose the thickness of that, the thickness of the tongue. Right, I've cut that. It's a nice snug fit up and down that way, so these faces should finish flush, but not tight that way. I don't want it to bind when I put when I clump these boards together, leaving a gap here. Now I need to cut some tenons and some mortises, and mark all them out. I could of course use dominoes on the end, but things like this I like to be quite old fashioned. This is going to get cut out in a big circle, a big oval, should I say? So you'll end up with dominoes like that. Right, I'm just laying my mortises out on here. I've got my plank there. I've got my top rail there. That is where my bottom rail sits. Flush with that side. And then my, my matchboard will be sitting on top of here. That's the thickness of my matchboard. And that works out about a third. And that's pretty much what I'd make the mortise and tenon anyway, three thirds. So when I put it under the machine there, I can cut one side, spin it around, cut the other side. And that should give me a mortise down the middle. And that'll be the same for these, so I don't have to alter the machine as such. Now I've got to decide. I've got 10 mil there. That'll be my little haunch on the end. So I think I'm just going to do two six inch tenons. So I'll mark that on there, six inch there, six inch there. And then this one will be a sort of stub tenon, just going in an inch maybe. I'll show you that. A bit hard to explain. I'm going to go with a 10mm cutter, partly because it's in the machine already. I'm going to make two passes. I could go with a slightly wider cutter, but then when I do a second pass, it always seems to just drift into this one, and I get a sort of tapered hole, rather than two parallel cuts, two straight down cuts, if that makes sense. I do have a nice big cutter there, that would be able to do it in one. I think that's half inch, that's just, that's the one that I was talking about, if I do one then it only takes off a couple of mil and it just seems to drift off a little bit. So anyway, I'll do one row, spin the wood round, do the other row, and then I know it's exactly in the centre, and I get two straight cuts, and that's just me depth setting, it's slightly deeper than I need, it's always nice just to have a little bit extra these things don't give a nice flat bottom get out of the way these bits in the middle there they're going to be full tenons full they're going to be full mortises and these bits I'm just going to go in about an inch just move that out of the way got depth stop here this bar stops me going down so far so when it comes to those bits in the middle Put this little block under there. Stops me going down. And then the cutter will only cut in that far instead of the fold up.
Right, just need to clean them up, which is a little bit inside. Just take off these bits. That must be a 9mm cutter in there, because it just did two. And they're finishing about 18mm. That's 15, that's 15 and 18. And the timbers themselves are about 48mm. 47, 48 mil. So, like I say, normally I'd do a third, so that'd be about 15 mil, but that's alright, that's fine. So now, now that I've got them, I can cut my tenons on my rail. Right, I cleaned these up a little bit with chisel, and I've just done this test cut on the mitre saw there using the depth setting, and it's snug there but a little loose in that one a little loose in that one a little loose in that one it's ok though, a bit of room for some glue might make it a little bit thicker and then just plane it down a little bit But that's why I like the Domino, so accurate. Right, I've got to cut a shoulder right down here on either side of this to go in those long mortises. I've measured it corner to corner so it's square, very very good actually, it's within like half a millimetre. I've got to decide, do I try cutting each one of these on there, do I put my sled on, cut it on there, that's how I used to do them, or I might use my track saw and then I'll get a very straight cut all the way through, these two joints will, will be spot on, same there, and I can set the depth quite accurately on that machine as well, flip it over, do the other side. I think that's what I'm going to do. Stay. So 9.25. So yeah, 160mm. So I'll come in 80mm. If you can see that, but it's a very clean cut. Right, I'm just going to use this, mark my shoulders on either end, move it down here, mark them again. I'll check that it's parallel, but it should be. Now at least I know this is the same size as that. You see it's pretty flat. So I shouldn't have any problem with the track saw so making a different depth across. Just 
Here's my test piece as a depth gauge. Actually, mark it on the end there. Right, got a bit of a scary cut. This is pretty square, but what will be important is as long as it cuts along the straight line, and I'm cutting to the waist side, so even if it cockles over a little bit. This tenon will get too fat. But it's a bit of a scary cut. Not for the faint hearted. I've sharpened the saw blade. Let's see how it goes. There were definitely some well dodgy cuts. A little snug, it's better than loop being too loose. If I was you, I'd just make lots of cuts, lots of cuts, chop it out with chisel. That mark there is that mark there so I've just brought it in a little bit I don't want it tight and this needs to be 10 mil down so I've made that about half inch 
cut that off with jigsaw probably. These aren't glued together yet. I'll cut this off. I don't have a tenon and saw but I'll cut that with a knife and then just cut it off with with a saw. I'll find something. Same on that end. We'll see how it fits. I might have to pair this off a little bit. I've got a little bullnose plane. Whip a fraction off with that. Finally got it together. So we cut out these ends. I ran them back over the saw, moved the fence back a little bit, and ran them over the saw just so they fitted nicely. That worked out alright. These joints will pull up when it's clamped. The joints are, are pretty flat. That's a big ass gate. I can't decide whether I'm going to bother putting a brace in or not. I feel like it should have one, but with these mortises, I might regret it if I don't, so I probably will put one in, but we'll see.